Good day, everyone. We're coming on the air to bring you the latest on Hurricane Michael, now bearing down on the Florida Panhandle. It is now a Category 4 storm, although... Mesco Beach had the most devastation I'd seen. Right, search and rescue teams are scrambling to assess the damage. It was devastating. Mexico Beach took a direct hit. Once a popular tourist destination, it is now obliterated. Five miles makes all the difference. My name is David Merrick. I'm the director here at the Center for Disaster Risk Policy at Florida State University. We've been using drones uh, in disasters since 2012. The Center for Disaster Risk Policy's primary mission uh, is to create and promote best practices in emergency management, including the use of unmanned aircraft systems in disasters. If you get to, into a hazmat incident where you're going to have to put people into level A suits and put them into the hot zone so they can do that reconnaissance about exactly what's happening there, that's going to get very expensive and it's, it's also very hazardous to the personnel who have to do that. And one of the things that fire departments are doing all over the state, all over the country at this point, uh, is using drones, particularly those with thermal capabilities, to go into uh, the hot zone, into that area that is probably unsafe and gather more information quickly. Everything you should be doing with a drone in emergency management or in emergency services is to compress a timeline, to speed something up, right? And that could be the speed, speed up information gathering, to speed up a search, right? To make existing resources and teams on the ground more efficient and more able to do their job. Usually if you have someone that is in a search and rescue event where you may have a lost uh, subject that's out in the field, we want to be able to capture that data very rapidly with a platform, have the proper sensors on that platform, and then we want to be able to take and, prop and then rapidly be able to process that data. Because every minute that goes by, a person's life could be lost. The reason why we're using Pix4D Rack because it's a, it's a kind of a, a smaller version and it can be easily put onto a laptop and then it can be processed very rapidly in the field. The challenges you run into is we don't know where we're going and we don't know if we're going to have accessibility to a bigger computer to process so we can take it just directly on the laptop, do what we're doing here today, sit on the back of a truck and process that data set very rapidly. So it gives that capability to the, the responder at the end of the day. The reason why we've started doing uh, joint classes with, the, uh, with Chrysler and Florida State University is we want to take our experience, of real world experiences, and take that out to the community. Um, flying a drone in a, in a controlled environment is totally different than coming to a disaster such as um, Mexico Beach. We want to take that knowledge that we have and always give that information back to the community so they can understand and learn from the lessons that we've had, the good, the bad, the indifferent, and, and be able to take that in their day-to-day -day applications. Five, six seconds. Why would you assume it was me? So, as we mentioned earlier, right, in the Puma, I don't think you can overstate this. There's nothing like saving somebody's life. The feeling. It feels really good. 